Okay, hi everyone, it's Peter Forbes here back again. Um, welcome to our today's webinar on our milk bottles release for HR Onboard. Um, just a couple of little housekeeping announcements before we get going. Um, we're using Zoom today for our webinar software. Um, we, you can hear us, but we can't hear you. But if you have any questions, feel free to um, click the little question button in your Zoom controller and we'll try and get to them throughout the webinar. Uh, there'll be plenty uh, of opportunity at the end to ask questions as well. So today, just introducing our presenters. Um, I'm Peter Forbes. I'm the founder and CEO of HR Onboard. And with me today is Simone Ware, who is in our customer success team, one of our senior consultants. Welcome, Simone. Hi, thanks, Pete. Um, hopefully everyone's probably spoken to Simone at some time with our current customer base. Um, so today what we're doing is um, I'll be explaining some of the things around and Simone will be driving and showing you some of those demonstrations. Um, look, we're proud to announce release number 13 or as we like to call it, milk bottles. Um, those of our customers know we've got a long history of of calling our releases, our quarterly releases after lollies because we all have sweet tooths in the office um, and this one's no different. So uh, yeah, we have a quarterly release schedule. Um, milk bottles is the current one and that's what we're here to talk about. So let's go right into it. Okay, it's been, um, it's been a really big release. This, this re release that is coming out um, into production uh, in kind of early early August, um, and what we want to do today is just touch on a few of the main features uh, that you will see throughout um, the release when it comes in, and it'll be available in the trial environment uh, pretty much right now after today's webinar. Those of you with trial environment access, you can go in and check it out, which is really good, um, and we'll direct you also to some. Uh, release notes and other information on our uh, online user guide called The Hug. So let's let's take a look at some of these new features that we've got. Um, I think we were going to just uh, talk about each one in turn and go in, have a look and come back out. Um, so look, I, I guess overall just as a, as a guide into how we determine features, what we're putting into the product and the roadmap. Um, that's really based on, a lot of it is in a couple of areas. Some of it's based on um, what we're seeing in the market, what we've already, you know, in our vision for HR on board around, uh, you know, perfecting that, that workflow and transactional side of employee onboarding. Um, we know there's a lot of features we need to put in the product to satisfy our current customers and also what the market's asking of us. Um, we also obviously listen to what our customers are saying to us. We keep a big log of all those requests. Um, we have a page on our internal wiki that shows everything our customer success team is hearing from our customers and obviously we kind of collate that and, and take that into consideration. Um, also what we want to make sure is we make the product as flexible and as easy to use um, for our users and also for the administrators in each of our customer sites. And we've done a lot of administration type uh, features in this um, release as well. Uh, what we want to talk about first though is the marketplace. Um, the marketplace is basically a feature we've introduced in the admin area um, to basically, um, you know, HR on board is a point solution we have um, we do employee onboarding really really well, but we don't do recruitment, we don't do payroll or other things. What we want to allow um, our customers to do is make it really easy to connect into third-party systems um, and and try and do that nearly out of the box if possible. So what we've done is. Um, We've created a marketplace in the admin. Um, if you can just scroll back up. Sorry, Simone. So Simone's just showing you here now um, the admin area in HR Onboard, and she's clicked on the marketplace. And here what you basically see is a whole bunch of third-party vendors um, that we're working with um, and the ability to basically configure those uh, integrations from the admin area. So 
in this in this first release of our marketplace, what we've done is um, for some of the built-in connectors we've done to either recruitment systems or payroll systems, you'll have the ability to install and configure those integrations yourself. Others that require a little bit more work either from ourselves to configure in the back end or it's an integration provided by one of our partners, um, you'll be able to make an inquiry and that'll send off uh, a request to our customer success team who will then be able to help you with your query. But look, what we'll do is we'll just have a look at um, the, first, uh, the first marketplace vendor we have here is JobAdder. Uh, JobAdder is a well-known recruitment, cloud-based recruitment software um, that's used in Australia and the US. And what we've done is we've created an out-of-the-box integration. So if you're a job at a customer and you want to basically create um, a way to get those placements that have been uh, created in your job at a recruitment system and basically send those candidate details directly into HR Onboard, this is what this integration can do for you. So if Simone clicks on install for that job adder one, um, basically what it's asking you is a couple of details about uh, the job adder, your job adder environment, the URL for the API, and a user password to authenticate against. If you set that up in our system, uh, basically what it does, another on the dashboard of HR Onboard, as you're going to create offers, instead of just manually creating offers, it'll ask you if you want to import those offers directly from JobAdder. So um, it makes that, uh, actually, do you want to go to the dashboard? Or no? Even though we haven't set that up here, when you go through the import process, oh, there it goes. It'll ask you to import from JobAdder. And that basically, um, when you go through that little import through JobAdder, it'll pull any flagged, um, vacancies or, or recruitment candidates through from the job adder system straight into HR on board. And that obviously saves the ability of having to rekey information from your recruitment um, system through to your onboarding. Um, so that's one example of um, some of our marketplace vendors. If we just have a look at a couple of others. So we have a couple of other recruitment partners in here. And if Simone just scrolls down, um, we've done a couple of others with Smart Recruiters, um, which is a US-based recruitment company. But if you scroll down for a few more Australian-based uh, recruitment partners like Express, uh, Scout, and Turbo, um, with those recruitment vendors, they've actually created an integration into HR on board from their side. Uh, so you actually configure the integration in the HR on board from their side, which is why there's a Make Inquiry button here. Um, they're, they're, you know, we have third-party um, vendors and independent developers uh, developing integrations against our API. The other important integration, aside from the recruitment integration into HR on board, is pushing out completed accepted offers from HR on board into your payroll systems. Um, we've done a lot of work and, and as a company um, through our, our sort of parent company, Navigo, we've got a long history of understanding the, the, the payroll space in Australia and how to integrate with those vendors. And we've done a lot of work um, at, a, at a kind of, I guess you could call it a version one, working with building extracts out of HR on board into those payroll vendors via CSV file. Um, which is, you know, very much a, a user manual driven export feature, export out of HR on board, import into that other system in a file format that other system will accept, but it's still a manual process. Obviously, it's now 2016, cloud software is, is the go and HR on board is a, a true software as a service system. Um, as, as the other vendors mature out their technology platform, um, particularly the payroll, the traditional payroll vendors, uh, they're starting to offer a more um, web services based integration methods. Um, that's really good for us because what that means is we can start to create some consistent out of the box integration mechanisms to those payroll providers um, that will enable you to basically, uh, you know, automatically send completed offer details directly into that payroll system. How that payroll system accepts that new hire package 
uh, different differs between payroll vendors. Some may push it into a staging area that then requires further information to be added before it can be accepted as a true new hire record. Uh, others will go straight in as a new hire record. It depends on the payroll system. Um, but look, we're working with uh, pretty much all the payroll vendors uh, in Australia to provide that integration. Um, one of the first ones we've done as via a web services mechanism is Proceda by NGA. Um, so we actually have a, a fairly uh, configurable process there going through the APIs. Um, we're working on a number of others that we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, as you see there, if Simone just scrolls down a little bit, you'll see we have um, some CSV configuration for ADP Ascender, which was called Alesco, Orion, Chris21, and a couple of others. Um, so we're, we're always working on those payroll um, vendors um, to make that integration as seamless as possible. What you might also notice um, in the marketplace, it's just not the recruitment and the payroll vendor integration that we have. Um, if you just scroll up a little bit, Simone, you'll see there's two other integrations here. Um, we have one called Slack and one called Webhook. Um, for those of you uh, who don't know what Slack is, Slack is basically a cross between Skype and Instant Messenger. Yeah. Um, on steroids, yeah. um, but it, it allows a lot of basically programmatic integration. So you can push a lot of uh, external feeds into Slack channels, what they call channels. So we have a Slack um, marketplace uh, hook here. And basically what that allows you to do, if, that, if your organization does use Slack as a communication channel, um, it will be able to push details of um, people who are going through the HR onboard offer process. It'll be able to, to push progress alerts into specific Slack channels. So um, you can install that straight away from the marketplace into your Slack environment. The other one that we have out of the box is also called uh, a webhook. And all of these ones I'm explaining here, you'll see there's links in the marketplace out to our user guide, which explain it in a lot more detail about how some of these integrations work. Um, Webhook is just, um, some of this is quite technical, but it's really good for organizations who are trying to streamline a lot of the, the processing and notification and workflow that happens when a new hire comes on board and, and you know automating that through um, their back office. Basically, what a webhook allows you to do is, again, send the progress and information about offers and exits directly to a web service that your organization may have set up internally. And this is, this is excellent for auto-provisioning of user accounts and other information in the back office. Um, again, it's, it's kind of a technical feature, but it allows for that streamless um, uh, or that seamless integration of HR on board into your existing corporate systems. Um, and again, there's a whole bunch of information on the user guide. So that's, that's kind of the overview of the marketplace. We're looking at adding a whole bunch more of vendors. Um, the marketplace is available um, to any users of the back office who have the um, system administration preference or permission. Um, and, and only those users with that permission um, will be able to see the marketplace. Okay, so that's the that's marketplace. Our, our next feature, which I think I'm handing over to Simone for, is around our companies and location management. Um, Simone's saying I need to talk about this first. <laughs> um, so companies and location management is something... Um, we realized was really, really critical for those organizations that have multiple hiring entities um, where there may be one proprietary limited as an umbrella holding company, but underneath that, there's a whole bunch of brands and companies. And within those companies, uh, there's a whole bunch of locations or business units. And basically what we've done with Milk Bottles, we've had some of this functionality already conceptualized in HR on board, but with Milk Bottles, um, we've exposed the administration of companies and locations uh, for the HR on board customer administrators. Uh, so Simone will just take you through that. 
Hopefully I've explained it well this morning. Thanks, Pete. Yes, it was very beautiful. <laughs> um, so to navigate to your company's area or to maintain your company's in HR on board, from the left-hand navigation menu, which for some of you existing customers will notice has changed, um, click on Companies. To add a company, either click Add Company or maintain an existing company by clicking the Edit icon. Company details include a unique identifier, a registered name, and the country in which the hiring company is located. So select the, the country from the available countries in the drop down. Details also include address, as well as information based on the company that you've selected. So for Australia, we're required to enter the ABN of that company some ATO and Centrelink uh, contact details, as well as default super fund details. So this information, Simone, uh, will default into a lot of the legislative um, information. Uh, that's, that's right. Idea. That's yep. exactly right, Pete. Um, so it's actually using the placeholders, which you can see underneath each of the field labels that we've got here. Um, so these placeholders are used in those legislative forms, such as a tax file declaration form. Um, these super details are actually displayed in that super choice form. Um, these placeholders can also be used in any Word documents that you might upload to your offers, crossboards or exits um, to save having to manually handle those files. Once you've created your company, you can add locations if they're applicable. Simply click add a location, but let's have a look at an existing one. So just like companies, locations include um, a unique identifier as well as a name. Select the company and then edit some address and telephone details. And again, um, one of those drop downs is country. Uh, the attributes, if you select different countries, the attributes slightly change, or is that that's in the actual at the company level, not yeah. the location level? Yeah, so that, that is at company level, Pete. Um, yep. So, for example, if I were to select in the company, United yep. States, it would ask me for United States specific address details um, yep. and company registration details. Yeah, cool. So, once you've initially saved your location, you will be able to see those placeholders again. Um, you are able to use in your, uh, your Word documents that you might upload. Now, if you do need any more information about using placeholders in your documents, uh, you can contact support, uh, but there is lots of information in the hug as well to help you out there. Now, for the company or the location, assign visibility of that company or location's events to your back office users. So simply click users, add users, and then tick and untick those back office users that you want to assign visibility to. It's as simple as that. So that's all we have for companies and locations. Uh, pass it back over to Pete. Okay, excellent. So companies and locations are a good way of of basically um, breaking your, your company down into the individual hiring entities and then the locations around that. And then um, as you have back office users, um, you, can, you can set those um, visibility of what those back office users can see from uh, what offers and what exits they can see based on those companies and locations. And we've got a question saying, um, are there any limits on the number of companies that can be created? And there is a limit between the two plans, isn't there? Yeah, so um, for our standard customers, you have um, one legal or one hiring company, um, but you can have as many locations against those companies as you need. Um, for premium customers, uh, it's up to three hiring companies, but for enterprise, um, so you unlimited. Are unli yeah, yeah, it's unlimited. So it's based on your, your plan that you're on, whether you're on standard premium or enterprise for the number of companies that can be there. Um, the locations, uh, there's no limit on the number of locations, but we did have another question saying, can the locations be set to specific companies only? 
is that uh, I think what that means is a location is always associated to a specific company. That's right. So when you prepare a company, um, within that company, you create the locations for that company. So yes, they yeah. are set to specific. So companies. even if um, you had two companies in your group at a same location, you'd have to you'd have to create two separate locations under each of the companies. That's yep. right. Yep. But you can then restrict the visibility of who can see those. Um, offers that exist under that company or location. Absolutely. Yep. So a lot of the security drives off that. So that, and that, that comes into our next feature we want to talk about, which is the portal branding. Um, so the new hire portal, you know, in HR on board, we talk a lot about the back office users who, um, you know, who are the ones who are creating offers or reviewing offers and, uh, and exits if you're using the offboarding um, module. Um, but obviously what new hires see when you're offering them the job is they don't log into what we call the back office, they log into the new hire portal. The new hire portal um, obviously is branded to the look and feel of your corporate entity. Now obviously this was a problem where if you have multiple corporate entities um, and we have lots of customers where this is a classic example, um, whether they're in... Um, you know, they're in retail and there's a couple of different retail brands or there's just different, um, I'm thinking about the, the um, what's the word? Uh, it escapes me now, but the, the food groups, <laughs> I'm using the wrong words. Um, in terms of the uh, restaurant chains, some of the restaurant yep. chains we have and things like that. Yep. Um, that they want to, you know, they won't, they don't want to hire someone who comes into a portal seeing a generic brand. They want to see the specific brand that they're hired for. And this is what new hire portal branding gets. That's what I was trying to say. Cool. So um, what Simone's going to show you is uh, basically the, we now have a screen that administrators can change their own branding in the, in the system and they can also then create different brands and associate those to different companies. So go for it, Simone. Thanks, Pete. So um, in the admin area, from the left nav bar, click Branding and then select Portal Branding. So by default, HR on Board comes with uh, HR on Board built-in branding. Okay, so that just comes out, out, out of the box. Um, but you will be able to customise your own branding. So click Create New Brand to add a new brand. However, let's look at, an, an, at editing an existing one. So click the edit icon and that'll bring up the ability to customise it. So give the brand a name, then apply a logo to display on the portal login screen. So it's the logo that your new hires will see when they first click on that link from the offer email. If I scroll down a little bit further, we can customise the portal header. So when that new hire logs into HR on board, this is the heading section, so the top section um, of the browser. We can select a company logo to display by clicking update, and we can drag and drop an image quite easily into HR on board just to upload it. Or we can choose an existing image from our image gallery. Once you've got your logo up, and click OK. Then we have the mobile, the mobile company logo. So this is displayed uh, when HR on board is used in a mobile um, or tablet device. Now, we do have an image selected here. It looks like we don't have one, but it's actually a transparent image. We can then set um, our full background color for the, the header. You can either use the color picker which you can just sort of drag around here to select your colour quite easily. Otherwise, you can enter in the hexadecimal value. So what you have the ability to do here is quite some detailed configuration in the new hire portal um, with a lot of control um, over colours, images and what you can use. And you can... You know, it's kind of built, this, this screen's built for two purposes. One, for the non-technical um, administrator who can just click and choose the colours um, and, and see what's going on. But you can also, for the more technical 
uh, administrators who understand uh, CSS and a little bit of that design, they can really they can really go pretty full on in terms of the portal look and feel. That's right. And so if I drop down just a couple of other sections that we have here, the first one being uh, the portal navigation menu. So where that logout uh, link is displayed um, for existing customers, you can actually customise the background colour and the text colour for those. As well as something that we've never been able to customise before is a step progress indicator. So I'll show you where those are. But once you've entered in your colours um, and uploaded your images here, you can actually preview what your portal will look like. Yeah, which is a big one. Yeah, this is <laughs> awesome. We actually love this in customer success. It saves us a lot of time when we're doing configurations. So this is what uh, the preview looks like. And if I come up to the top of the screen here, this is our portal header. So it's it displaying the company logo that we've um, selected from that image gallery. Um, and it's displaying our background color in that beautiful green that we've entered in there. Underneath that is that navigation bar. Um, so we can set the background color and the text color of standard menu items. So you can see the link here. We can also set colors um, to display when the menu item has been hovered over um, or selected, as you can see with the home option here as well. So those unfamiliar with the step progress indicator, when we are in the portal, it's this left-hand uh, sort of navigation bar here, um, which tells us where we are in that acceptance process. Um, so that's a preview. So we'll close that up. Once you're happy with your branding, you can assign it or apply it to one of your existing companies. So click on that companies tab and assign it to the relevant hiring company. So whenever we prepare offers for Marin Finance, uh, the portal will be able will basically be using this branding. Now, if you do have companies that don't have branding assigned to it, you are able to set a default brand, which that portal will display by default. So to do that for any of the brands that you have existing here, you can click Make Default, and that will set that brand as a default brand. Excellent. Um, in terms of existing images in your configuration, you can view them in your image gallery. This is where you can upload new images as well. Simply click upload image and it's simple drag and drop. Or those existing images you can see configured, you can either download or delete them. So if you are going to try and delete any images, HR on board won't let you actually delete images that are used in any of your brands. Okay. So that is portal branding. Awesome. All right, thanks, Simone. Um, yeah, look, that's a, a really great feature for people. Um, we know we get a lot of requests from uh, branding and corporate marketing departments who, who really want to have that granular um, capability to really, yeah, that control for the new high portal. Yeah, it's be a great feature. People will love it. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so look, the last feature we want to talk about today is around what we call our people changes. And this is uh, introducing a concept such that you can see all the people who are in HR on board, um, not just the people who have offers against them, but also the back office users um, from one location, really. So Simone's going to show us that feature. Thank you. Um, so our people, if we access people from the top navigation bar, um, we are able to search for any sort of, I guess, user um, in HR on board and view and create offers, uh, cross boards and exits for them. So let's take a quick look at the filter. We are able to search for people that are active or inactive, that are people with offers, or we can just list those back office users if we wanted to. Or we can have a list of all of our people. Narrow the filter further um, by typing in the name of the person that you're searching for. So we've got Daniel Ricardo here. If we click to open up, we can see his profile. 
So we can see that Daniel has accepted um, his offer to start at the end of the month. Did well on the weekend. Came third. <laughs> I know. In God damn. I know. What a good <laughs> race. What a, what a race to podium on. That is awesome. <laughs> Um, so we can create um, offers, cross boards, or an exit for Daniel from his profile. So if we click create offer and so select a cross board if we're promoting him to number one driver, we can see that some of his information is actually pre-populated into that record. So this helps us to process these events much, much quicker. So what we're linking here is offer, exit records um, together under the user and creating that kind of user profile for them. That, that's exactly right. Not only can we create offers or exits from the profile from Daniel's profile, we can promote him to the back office. So this allows Dan, if we assign those relevant permissions, uh, this allows Dan to create offers if we need him to. Mm -hmm. So simply click promote to back office. You can see now that Daniel has the tag of back office user. If we go back to the list of people, um, we can see that the tag is there as well. So just to easily identify those back office users. Um, Simone, in terms of who can see what people in the back office, that's limited by, again, um, what your visibility is. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So if you're assigned to a particular company or location, um, that will control the offers for those people. But everyone will have the people tab? That's right. That's right. But the scope of who you can see in the people tab is limited by your security settings. That's yep. right. So um, because I'm logged in as Rick, Rick has actually been given user management permission mm -hmm. um, to basically promote Daniel to the back office. Yeah. So now that we've promoted him to the back office, we can actually edit his account mm -hmm. and assign him to the relevant role. So we can update his role, assign him to HR so that he can start preparing those offers. So basically what you've done there is you've made a, a, a new hire that's come through HR on board to accept his offer. He might now need access to the back office of HR on board and that's what you've done. That's exactly what I've yep. done. Which is, yep. which is a common um, sort of scenario in a lot of organisations. It is. They're either going to be a team leader who needs to approve offers or they're in HR or something yep. like that. Yep. Could be someone uh, on secondment, so for a temporary amount of time, in which case after that time you can demote them from the back office. Yeah. So that just makes him someone or a person with offers and exits against them. Yeah, beautiful. Um, Okay, so this is, uh, again, someone's just asking they don't have that yet. This, is, this hasn't hit production, so no. it will be in um, just a trial environment as of today. At the moment, it yep. is in the trial environment. So this is hitting production in August 8th, I think. Uh, we, we are looking at promoting um, this release to production on the 7th of oh, August. Oh, 7th. I always get that. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. So by the time you start work on, on Monday the 8th, you'll be able to see... Brands making new milk bottles release in production. Okay. Um, sorry, just a question. Yeah. Um, oh, I'll ask a question now. Um, just with now with the um, companies and locations, obviously when you're creating an offer, if you have access to more than one company or location. That's right. That's yeah. exactly right. So we do have um, a lot of customers that do use that multi-company uh, functionality. Yeah. So when they are preparing the offer, they get to select which company and which location the offer is against. Okay, um, we're just having a question here. Can we have two email addresses against the user? If you promote a person to back office, presumably all the alerts will go to their personal emails. We've, emails is one of these tricky ones. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, so at the moment, um, there is only one email address against user accounts, uh -huh. um, but we are looking um, in future releases to make that a bit more flexible to allow us to have um, a work. Personal. And is that set once? Once you've set the email address, you can't change it. Yeah, it's a current limitation. Yeah. yeah. So what, what it basically does is link any offers, um, so any records mm -hmm. against a particular email account um, to that person. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're just getting a couple of questions. We might as well answer them now. Uh, what does this mean for exits? Will the back office access be removed by default? No. So, and this is a manual process. Um, so once you've promoted someone as a back office user, um, you will need to demote them manually. Okay. 
So if that yeah, if that back office uses it off boards. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Simone. So that does bring us to the end of the demo. Um, but if you guys do need assistance with um, maintaining your admin area um, in terms of your companies, um, your branding and whatnot, please feel free to read the hub um, and also contact support who are always happy to help you. So back to you, Pete. Thanks. I'll change the slide. Yep. And look, guys, there's, there's a whole bunch of other um, enhancements in milk bottles um, that are on the release notes. Um, some are kind of boring sort of bug fixes and other bits and pieces, but yep. um, there's a whole lot more detail there. We're just sort of highlighting the, the selected ones out for this webinar today. Uh, so we've mentioned the key dates about when it's released to trial today, uh, live in production on the 7th of August. Um, please note any roles with the system configuration permission will have these new admin options available to them. So that's just something... Um, you want to make sure that anyone who is in a role with that permission, uh, they will see some of these um, new features like companies, locations, portal branding. Uh, so they will have access to that. Yeah, very powerful feature. Um, there is also a potential API impact um, we want to make people aware of. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we, you know, we, we expose a whole bunch of APIs in the system, so we're not always sure... Uh, well, we know who's using them, but we don't know how they're using them sometimes. Um, what you need to be aware of is um, if you turn on, you, if you start using companies and locations, it may cause um, some of your integrations to stop working. So it's probably safe to talk to customer success first. Yep. Um, if you know you have an integration that you've either built yourself or um, a third party has done for you, um, and you want to start using things like companies and locations in particular. Um, that, that's a one to know. Um, and of course, like we've mentioned before, our uh, HR on board user guide, the hug, um, you can go there and read a whole bunch of things around it. Um, so in terms of what's coming next, everyone asks us, what's on the roadmap? What, what's happening? Um, and look, we, we can answer um, some of that for uh, next quarter, definitely. We've already planned our, our next couple of sprints, what we call our sprints. Um, so what's coming? Um, look, the big thing that's coming at the moment is a lot more um, enhancements around uh, encryption, password management, and authentication. Um, some of this is working towards our ISO 27001 certification, uh, which we're aiming for end of year certification. Uh, so in that encryption and um, features include things like uh, per tenant encryption. So each tenant has uh, an encryption key and basically um, that data is encrypted differently to every other tenant in that shared infrastructure. Um, we're introducing two-factor authentication for the back office. Um, and a whole bunch of um, other things around password management, including uh, minimum password settings, uh, 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 password reuse, and attempted password um, attempts, yeah. um, oh, in, it, to to kind of um, you know get around brute force attacks and things like that. So a whole bunch of authentication and, and security um, enhancements. We're also doing um, more web services payroll integration and uh, the top of our list are Connex and Chris21 is pretty much the most requested payroll integrations we're getting at the moment. Uh, both Connex and Chris21 offer a web services integration and uh, we're looking to release those in our next release. Um, another big one is reminder notifications. So this is the ability to set... Uh, notifications probably at first by email, maybe SMS, um, through for things like tasks and other key events in the system so that you're getting those um, prompts to tell you when things are happening. Uh, another big one that's happening is uh, pre-hire acceptance check. So basically this is introducing an optional workflow when you're creating an offer um, such that a new hire may be asked to fill in a, a couple of pieces of information or do something before the formal offer is sent out for them to accept. Um, this is good whether you want them to do 
um, a, a police check or other external checks and they need to have satisfied that before your um, it's conditional on sending the offer based on some sort of pre-hire pre check. Um, and the last one we wanted to just mention was onboarding analytics uh, version one. So this is basically giving you um, all this juicy information we keep about, um, you know, time to hire, um, you know, uh, how many, we, we do some basic analytics in the product now, but we really want to expose that um, out a lot more and give you some uh, more richer metrics and analytics about what's going on in the system. Uh, so that's all coming out for our next quarter release, which is called Racing Cars. Very exciting. Yes. Um, so look, I want to thank everyone to our, thanks to our team who made all this possible, our dev team, customer success. Um, there's a snapshot of some of us from our, our kickoff up in the mountains a few weeks, week ago. Um, we've got a lot of news um, to celebrate as a company. Um, probably the first one is we're in a new Melbourne office now. We moved literally on Saturday, um, still out in the eastern suburbs, but we're, for those who know Melbourne, we're basically literally across the road from Ringwood train station um, on the edge of the new Eastland shopping complex. So close to cafes, restaurants, and, and a pub, of, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Staff are already spending a lot of money. So um, nice light and bright office. So anyone who's in Melbourne, feel free to come out and say hello. Um, we also passed our 100 customer milestone, which was very exciting. Um, and we, we now have customers kind of scattered mainly in Australia and New Zealand, but we have a few US, a uh, few UK, and even a South African customer, so that's great. Um, and we also passed our um, 20,000 onboards yeah. um, in the system, which is a really great achievement in just pretty much two and a half years of, of HR onboards. So it's been a really good um, journey, and it wouldn't have been achievable without our fabulous staff. Um, so thanks everyone. That's that's pretty much it. We'll take some questions now um, from anyone in the webinar. Um, we we do appreciate your support, and um, you, you're always welcome to review us on any of the online software review sites like mm -hmm. Captera and Software Advice. Um, with some, of, we've got a question here. I'll just take a couple of questions. Will HRO be doing checks in house or integrate with another provider? I'm not quite sure what that means. Is that around the marketplace? Pre-high checks. Oh, the pre-high checks. Oh, sorry, the pre-high checks. Yeah, no, what we're looking at with the pre-high checks is start to integrate with some of the common background check, police check providers um, in the market. We've always said our focus is on the onboarding space. Um, doing that well and working with, um, you know, quality selected partners who do those other functions really well. And in, in the Australian market, things like um, visa checks, uh, police checks, working with children checks, and even reference checks, there's a whole bunch of really good providers. So um, we're, we're always um, willing to work with those guys. Um, someone's asking us about integrating with um, Sage WageEasy. We haven't had a lot of queries around that one. Um, um, I personally haven't heard any, but that doesn't mean that anyone has, has wanted to. So that's something that we can follow up um, and get back to you, Elizabeth. Yeah, for sure. So um, basically, if there's, if there's enough demand there for a payroll integration, um, you know, we'll, we'll definitely consider that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I think that was all the questions. Um, thank you, Simone, for your time. And, um, Thanks, Pete. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. We hope you've learned something, and we're, we're really um, appreciative of your support for HR on board, and we're working hard to um, you know, do, do a lot more in the employee onboarding space, both from a, a back office efficiency in terms of the transactional side, but really as well as engaging your new hires and making that, that, that new hire onboarding experience as, as, as great as possible. So thanks a lot and uh, have a great day. See you guys. Bye.